Today, I want to try to restore and get back in operational this old DC meter that I got off of eBay several years ago. Is that something I wanted to collect? I was interested in it. I want to see if I could get it working. And uh, today, I just want to take a look at it. So, here we go. So, this is the little Mako DC voltmeter. Try to get a good view on this. Made in the USA. Patented. October the 3rd, 1916. I thought it was an interesting little piece. As far as testing it, <clears throat> hopefully you can see the, the glass is actually touched. I did get the, the needle to move testing it once, but the glass uh, released and it's touching the actual scale, and I believe it's pushing the needle into the into the scale. So with a a known good, tested good, but a little bit more modern, yet yeah, a lot cheaply made. See the plus two volt, plus 50 volt. So I got a, it's also got the, the 50 volt scale. Bring in the meter. Good. Let's try another one. There we go. Fully charged 20.19 volts. Let's see if this will this make the needle move. Not so far. Let's see if we can get into it and see if we can get it working. Okay. I'm back. I'm a little stubborn. Because I will misplace everything.
see those little divots there make it a little tighter. I think I'm going to get into my, my cell phone screen repair tools here. Got a little crooked. Ooh. Ooh, wow. And parts everywhere. There we go. That's where one was attached, the other. The top was just attached to the, the ground is attached to the top of the frame of the meter itself through that screw. Which I'm seeing now the two different windings. I actually didn't have to take these off because of. Uh, it didn't go through the back and the front. Actually, just that, just this actual front piece is where the the little bulkheads or little inserts were. Have a look at this coil. Lead-free solder? I think not. That old continental, you see that? Continental resistor. I'm gonna clean this up. I'm just gonna clean up the actual outer chrome case and this glass where the, the glue that they had used years ago had come loose, I'm gonna scrape that off. So actually, I, I would have had to take all the, the meter guts out anyway, because I gotta work on, on getting this back in. So, be right back. This stuff really cleans up well, just with a scraper. It's a good heavy duty scraper. There's like a fake light, it's some type of resin. Got the housing too. I almost wonder this housing isn't a type of silver. I got a magnet. doesn't stick so I see the polished silver or the reason I say that the way it did when I was cleaning it up could be aluminum though either aluminum or not long ago was hard to tell So I got these ready. There's several different ways we could do this today with epoxy or I'm actually just gonna use hot glue. Got some Gorilla gorilla hot glue sticks. They work really well. And it's easy enough to take off without being destructive if needed. I'm just gonna put a couple dabs on here in the top. Couple on the bottom and two on the sides. So there it is. A little bit right there. 
get before it dries. Of course, with this being thin metal, boy, it dried quick. It wasn't much working time on the hot glue that time. There it is. Back in place. Gonna let that cool off for a few minutes. I got this aside drying. I'm, I'm now gonna test out the movement. I do have a circuit there. I did check that off camera with a meter. But let's see. With plus being the two terminals and this being the lower voltage terminal, I'm gonna touch the plus of the battery to this screw. Let's see if I can get this in camera, see if it gives us gives us a movement. Yay! Got movement. So it does still work. I'm also gonna bring the meter in. I definitely wanted to get this old meter back to work and I, I don't want to make it any less original than I have to, of course. I'm gonna take this old braided cable, which I've cleaned up I cleaned up that little spring terminal. It's kind of neat how they did the contact point. I cleaned it up to keep it original as I could. I want to own this out and see. Make sure the resistance is fairly low on it. Getting a real good connection. I have to look at that a little more. Make sure that crimp's good. Have to look at the wire as well. I was able to put a little bit more crimp in that ring terminal, and um, hopefully that connection will be good enough to, to get a good reading off of. I hate to be in a, I'm assuming an original test lead. It surely looks like it. It came with it when, when I got it, but I'd hate to do something uh, I could, the kit with the braided, I could do something like this charging cable. I could do a newer style braid cable, but I hate to, if I can make the original one work, I definitely want to do so. And it seems to be good enough for now. Now I'm going to start reassembly. Just realized how they had that screw. Hello. It's just a, uh, a round head screw with no slot, but it's they ground one, one side of it so it would sit, sit in this housing like so. One way only. There we go. That's that part. Let's go ahead and get 
get this done. We gotta make sure that brass strip doesn't touch the housing in there. Now the insulator. Now the 50 volt scale terminal. Okay. Insulator lined up. Another insulator. Okay, it's back together. Put this on the plus two. It's a big difference between these two. You can see it on camera. I actually chucked this up in the drill. Got me some Scotch Brite. Here's one. Didn't hit this. I actually hit it with some emery cloth first. Hit it with the scotch right. There's that back. I'm gonna add the people like that.
Before we put the cover on, let's do a test. So let's give it a check. To the plus two volt, same battery as earlier. Showing 1.2. One point two. I believe this battery is a little bit depleted. I don't know if it's down to one point two or not. Let's bring I guess a stuck mother meter over there. Here we go. Got this one close by. Let's see the screen. One point three, so this one is depleted to 1.3 how about that so <laughs> still works quite well how about that well you're probably thinking, well, how does it do on the 20 volts? Well, I don't know, but we're going to find out right now. Plus. Nice. If you can see the screen here. Look at that. Just under 20. I'd say showing like 19 or so. With the bottom scale being the 0 to 50, of course. That's pretty awesome. I think I'm going to clean this cover up right quick. Be right back. I think that's as good as the the back cover is going to going to get. It might be mostly corrosion. I do see the little cutouts. The big one apparently for the top. makes you wonder if uh there was a three voltage model with the same cap or, or just the way that they done it who knows well there we go i had no idea that back cover just came off now i know well there you go a little Mako made in the USA. Patented October the 3rd, 1916. Little DC meter. Restored back, back in operation. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching.